Hello friends, welcome to the lecture series on human resource management and we are currently discussing about certain emerging trends in the field of human resource management. In the previous lecture, we discussed about two very important emerging trends, design thinking and employee experience. So, as far as design thinking is concerned, uh, design thinking is being used in uh, many domains and human resource management is one of them, whereby a human centric approach is taken to solve contemporary problems and it begins with empathizing with what the end user or the customer wants. So, in design thinking, the emphasis is on the customer rather than on the product or the cost or the profit involved in that product. And as far as employee experience is concerned, I stated that experience means that when an event becomes the process becomes an event of enjoyment and that etches on the memory of an individual. So, organizations are trying to give their employees an experience, they want their people to enjoy their working in the organization, they are trying to make it stress free, they are designing certain programs, they are designing certain strategies so that the entire employee journey starting from the day the employee appoints is appointed in the organization till the day he exits from the organization that entire period should be an enjoyable one should be like an event that an employee enjoys and experiences so we discussed these two trends in the previous lecture so, today uh, we are coming up with some more trends, the first one being psychological contract. I am sure you must have heard of a number of contracts and especially the HR professionals are quite familiar with contracts as every organization asks its potential new employees to sign at least one form or the other or one contract or the other contract and these are all legal contracts, they, these contracts have legal binding. However, there is one contract that is never signed. Now, you must be surprised that how come a contract is not signed? Well, that is the interesting part of a psychological contract. So, a psychological contract was originally developed by Dennis Russo, a professor of organizational behavior and public policy at the Carnegie Mellon University. And psychological contract consists of a set of certain unwritten expectations that exist between each individual employee and their employer. So, these are a set of unwritten expectations, they are not written, they are not legal, they are not binding. For example, in every and any relationship, there are certain unwritten concepts, there are certain unwritten expectations. For example, let us take an example of a student and a teacher. What does a teacher expect from its students? A teacher expects that the students maintain the decorum in the class, they are attentive, they are listening to whatever is being taught, they are receptive, they learn, they, they are obedient. So, that is what a teacher expects from the students. So, there is nothing that is written, this is an unsaid, unwritten expectation. 
similarly what does a student expect from the teacher well a student will expect that the teacher explains the concepts in a simpler manner is punctual teaches with passion so these are some unwritten expectations that are there in every relationship be it parent and children even in friends when we are friends with we expect a certain help from our friends and our friend also expects certain things from us but there is nothing that is legal there is nothing that is binding on the other person you cannot force your friend to help you you cannot force a student to learn so similarly in the case of an organization there are certain expectations from both the sides the employee as well as the employer so psychological contract basically includes informal arrangements mutual beliefs common ground and perceptions between the two parties and the two parties can be the employee and the boss employee and the employer and it represents in a basic sense the obligations the rights rewards etc that an employee believes that he or she is owed by his or her employer in return for the employee's work and loyalty so if i am working in an organization i am giving in my best i am achieving my targets so i expect that i am given a bonus maybe at diwali i expect to be promoted i expect to be in the good books of my seniors so these are certain beliefs certain perceptions that i owe because i am putting in my efforts i am putting in my loyalty into working for the organization now this is a very slippery road because there is nothing legal in it these are just mutual beliefs these are mutual expectations from both the sides from both the parties and the essence of the psychological contract pertains to the fact that there constantly exists a plethora of unwritten expectations that forms the part of the interaction between each member of the organization and their employer so the slippery part is that these are unwritten expectations what i feel what i perceive is not known to the employer and what the employer wants what the employer expects from me is also unwritten i am not aware of it until and unless the employer communicates to me so these are certain uh, we can say challenges in having a proper and effective psychological contract so the basic challenge in having an effective contract is that these are unsaid unwritten expectations so the either side does not know what the other side wants and expects from us so psychological contract it works in parallel with a written employment contract it is however different from the legal employment contract so I, as i stated uh, in the beginning that we know of uh, employment contracts that they are legal it is legal to both the sides to abide by those contracts and if any uh, one of the party breaches that contract you can directly go to the court you can sue the other person the employer can sue the 
employee and the employee can sue the employer if there is any breach of an legal employment contract right but the problem with psychological contract is that you you cannot sue a person can you sue your friend for not helping you out for letting you down can you sue a student can you sue a student can sue a teacher for not completing the syllabus no you cannot so it outlines the terms and conditions of employment remuneration arrangements basic rules governing the employment relationships these are the features of a legal contract which have the terms and conditions of employment that how much uh, salary you will be getting how many leaves you will be getting what are the other uh, benefits that you will be getting so these are the basic rules governing the employment relationship but on the other hand the psychological contract pertains to the broad expectations regarding what what each party seeks from this relationship so certainly uh, when an employee is working in an organization there is a certain relationship between the employee the employer and employees per se so psychological contract relates to the expectation that each party is seeking from this relationship so some of the basic aspects of the expectation from the employees point of view see now we will have two aspects one will be the employees aspect employees point of view and the other will be the employers aspect or employers point of view so what do employees expect from their employer so firstly they want to be treated fairly with equity and consistency so we all want that our bosses should be fair and equity should be there and a consistent behavior should be there then of course we want security of employment job security is a very important factor while we are working if i do not feel secure of my job then my morale and my motivation would be reduced i might not be performing very well if i am always under the pressure of losing my job so at any given point of time we all want security then we want to have a scope to demonstrate my skills my expertise my competence so it should not be the case that some other people are always getting an opportunity to show their skills i also want to have that demonstration i want to exhibit my competence so every employee wants that then of course we want career development and opportunity to develop skills so we know today there is a technological advancements at a we can say great pace so we need to upskill we need to reskill ourselves and every single employee in the organization they want to develop to attain certain skills so that they can perform better in the organization so career development and opportunity to develop skills another very important aspect another very important expectation of an employee next is trust in the management so every employee wants that they should be trusted they should keep their promises so whatever the organization or whatever the hr manager or your boss promises to you that must be kept that trust is very very crucial when we talk of psychological contract so the trust in the management of the organization to keep their promises is very important when we are talking of 
something like psychological contract which is which is not legal which is not important to be you know undertaken by everybody so you must have that trust now comes the employer's point of view the psychological contract covers such attitudinal and behavioral aspects of the employment relationship as competence so every organization wants that whatever job an employee is doing they must show competence so as i have already stated this that there are two parties involved in a psychological contract it is not a one sided affair right two parties are involved so there has to be a balance between what one is expecting and what the other party is delivering so there can be chances when the employees are lazy where the employees are not competent enough to face the challenges to come up with some new ideas to think out of the box they are just doing their routine jobs in the old style not putting in their efforts so thereby the employee is breaching the psychological contract because the employer wants their employees to exhibit competence they want their employees to show discretionary effort they want their employees to be engaged and we have learnt about employee engagement which means that how much discretionary effort i am putting in my job by discretionary effort means that i am not told to do this job but still i want my organization to succeed so i want to put in some extra effort see i have a job description and a b c d jobs are listed on that description and i am basically supposed to do only a b c d but i want my organization to succeed and i feel that if i do this additional job it will definitely attain effectiveness it will attain uh, greater profitability or productivity so i am walking an extra mile i am putting in my passion and involvement in that particular job but what if we are not putting in that discretionary effort what if as an employee i am not engaged i am just doing my job and just going out so that means i am breaching the psychological contract as an employee because my employer wants me to be an engaged employee the next that the employer wants is compliance to both the statutory non statutory regulations they want their employees to comply with all the rules and regulations said unsaid of the organization then what else does the organization want they want commitment they want loyalty from their employees so as you can see this competence discretionary effort compliance commitment loyalty from the employee these cannot be you know defined these cannot be written in a contract these cannot be written in an agreement that an employee can sign that okay i'll be competent yes i will put my discretionary effort no so these are unwritten expectations and the most challenging aspect of these psychological contracts apart from it being an unwritten thing 
is that it can keep on changing with the employee cycle, employee life cycle. Because when I join an organization as a new hire, my expectations would be different. Initially, I might be wanting job security, I might be wanting a better pay. But gradually as I move up the ladder, my psychological contract, my expectations might change. And that does happen with the pass, passing of time, with gaining experience, your expectation from your job, your expectation from the organization also changes. So, what I want from my employer today would be different from what I want from my employer after say 10 years. After 10 years, I might not be running for a paycheck. I might not be insecure of my job, losing my job. But after 10 years, I might be wanting something different. So, it is difficult for the employer to continuously understand what each employee at each given time frame wants from them. So, that is a more challenging aspect of psychological contract. And the second challenging aspect of psychological contract is that since there are two parties involved, what happens is when there is a there is an imbalance. By imbalance I means that since I have said that there are two parties, one party is abiding by the psychological contract, but the second party is not aware of it. So, what happens then? You can um, understand this uh, with a uh, simple example. Say you are friends with a person and you always you know uh, take out time uh, for him or her. You go out of the way to help him. So, you are abiding by the psychological contract, but the other party your friend always lets you down, does not listen to you, maybe gossips about you at the back. So, he is breaching the psychological contract. Now, that balance is very important when we talk of psychological contract. Until and unless both the parties understand this contract it cannot reap fruits. You will not benefit anything if only one party is abiding by the contract and the other party is breaching. Because what is lost when you breach a psychological contract is trust. The entire psychological contract think is based on mutual trust and respect. So, if one party is abiding, the other party is breaching. So, what goes wrong and what you lose is trust. And trust, I must say, is a very, very important feature or aspect of any relationship. And psychological contract is basically about the employee-employer relationship. So, if the trust is missing, so as I said that one party misses out and the other party is abiding, so what you lose is trust, right. So, moving further, the nature of psychological contract is changing due to changes in the internal and external environment of the business and these changes can be explained by a shift in paradigm from personal management to human resource management. So, now we are we have become more human centric 
we are moving from the administrative functions of personal management to more of strategic human resource management. So, that is why the psychological contract is also moving. So, the previous or traditional psychological contract, it focused more on command and control, but now the psychological contract is more of mutual relationships as I already stated that the core of psychological contract is the trust that helps you build that relationship. And if you have trust in your relationship, then that is going to have everlasting effects and more emphasis is on commitment today, participation and involvement both the employee as well as the employer. So, it is an important feature of an employment relationship aspect of HRM as it invisibly binds the employer and the employee through a set of expectations and it is essential for the HR departments to form a positive psychological contract with employees and include certain HR policies and practices which can you know contribute to making promises or obligations on the part of the employer and expectations of the employees. So, why is uh, it, uh, uh, why do we say that psychological contract is crucial? It is crucial because it enhances employees level of motivation and commitment of morale is affected. It leads to higher employee satisfaction, better employment relations, obviously it is based on relationships and if when there is a, a relationship of trust, mutual respect, then obviously those relations lead to better commitment and there is an improved productivity and performance of an employee. So, the role of HR in psychological contract, so if you have to build a positive psychological contract, what does the HR, what, what can the HR do? They can provide better opportunities for learning, training and development. They can focus on the job security, promotions, career development, minimizing the status differentials by having a fair reward system, comprehensive communication. So, these all lead to a positive psychological contract. So, thus psychological contracts are an integral part of the workplace dynamics that we are talking of that frame all the formal transactions and it is important that HR practitioners and professionals are mindful of psychological contract when advising their organizations on how to best select, train, retain and promote uh, their people. So, uh, that was all about psychological contract being an emerging trend in human resource management. So, we will continue with some more emerging trends in the next section. Thank you.